Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about all of the Fox Friday games. It'll be fascinating to watch some of those games. Obviously, a lot of conference realignment games in there. So it'll be interesting to see how those new conference games look. But let's jump into some spring overreactions. We've done a lot of the ACC. We've done a lot of the Power Four conferences. This will be the final uh, edition of the spring overreaction segment. But we got the ACC to get through. And we're going to start with a team that is so fascinating to me. And I think a lot of people around the country which is Virginia Tech. Uh, And my overreaction is the Hokies might just be in Charlotte at the end of the year. I think this is a team that it doesn't really feel like too uh, much of an overreaction to do that. I I think this team is going to be absolutely fascinating to watch. They're led by Kyron Drones, who is one of the most experienced and fascinating quarterbacks in the entire conference. He's a guy that I think is going to absolutely blow up this year. Brent Pry came into that program when it was on some interesting uh, footing. Definitely not where they would like to be around Virginia Tech and around Blacksburg, but he's slowly getting it back to where it needs to be. It feels like they're starting to wake up out there, and uh, it's something that is a little bit of a scary proposition for the ACC, especially if some of the big guys leave. Uh, Virginia Tech could be the dominating force in this conference for quite some time. Uh, I think they're sitting right now uh, sixth in odds for the ACC to win this year, but also they're number one in the country when you talk about returning production. Number one on offense, 12th on defense, so plenty of guys coming back for this team, and it was a solid team a year ago, so it's going to be fascinating to watch if they can step up to the level of the Clemsons, of the Florida States, of the Miamis possibly this year, and I think it's going to be incredible to watch, especially Kyron Drones, do what he can do, because behind maybe Cam Ward. I I think that's as far as I would have him down the list of ACC quarterbacks right now because this dude can do incredible things on the football field, played a lot of uh, great football at Baylor, but never really quite hit his stride the way he was hoping. It feels like he's found a home here. And uh, if they beat at Miami, which is a a game that'll be very, very interesting for the future or for the ACC this upcoming year, if they can get to Clemson in Week 11 somehow, if they can get there undefeated, which is a much taller proposition than it sounds like, but if that happens, that place will be on fire, and a ton of people will be learning what Virginia Tech football is all about and might be learning it for the first time, and I just cannot wait for that day because Blacksburg gets crazy. Uh, let's put it that way, but uh, let's get into Cal, and let's talk about Jade Knott. I think this guy is absolutely one of the guys that can lead this conference in rushing, you have a ton of really good running backs in this conference, though. It starts with Omari and Hampton. He was the leading rusher in the conference a year ago. Actually outrushed Jade not a year ago by about 200 yards. So definitely some ground to make up on the Omari and Hamptons of the world. Uh, Damian Martinez is also out there. So a ton of really, really good running backs that he's going to have to compete with for this title. But I really love Jade not He feels like he's hitting his stride at there at California and also it feels like this offense is just going to need him this upcoming year. There's a lot of movement at quarterback, at wide receiver, at a ton of the big-time positions for Cal, and I think they'll be able to throw the ball down the field from time to time this year, but a lot of their work is going to be done on the ground, and a lot of their work is going to be turn it around, give it to Jaden Knott, and let him be what uh, who he is. So I think he's going to be as get as much work as any running back in the entire country and I think that obviously lends itself to him Amari and Hampton is comfortably the one that is going to be the biggest hurdle for this one but I do think that UNC has a little bit more of a passing attack this upcoming year than Cal at least from my point of view so it'll be fascinating to watch that will actually break down Max Johnson here in a second and what he could do for the UNC offense but it feels like Cal is in a position where you had a good year uh portaling and wide receivers bring in guys that you needed Chandler Rogers came in at quarterback although it looks like uh he's going to get beat out for that starting job it does feel like this team is heading in the right direction but it feels like for the time being you're going to have to lean on your guy and that's Jade Knott and he's going to be incredible to watch uh this upcoming year he's one of the guys that I think will become a household name throughout the year and people will be very much looking forward to watching him in 2025 but let's break down Syracuse here for a second because a lot of stuff has happened with Syracuse and obviously the Orange are not necessarily the most talked about team in the world around this time of year but when we talk about Syracuse going forward it feels like we're going to use a little bit of a different tone than we used in the past because Fran Brown is officially in Syracuse and a lot of people might not fully not know that name or not be fully familiar with him. He was the DB coach at Georgia for a very long time, got taken over by Charvarius Robinson this uh, past offseason. And 
Fran Brown has done incredible things, especially in the backfield of that UGA defense. But just in general, when you talk about recruiting, when you talk about a million different things in college sports, he is at the very forefront of it. He is a huge reason why Georgia is where they are today, and I'm sure Kirby Smart would tell you that. So I think Fran Brown is one of the most fascinating people in the sport. He's going to be very fast rising, but I think Syracuse is very hoping that he will stick around for a while because it feels like a new era is starting up there in Syracuse. Kyle McCord coming in is huge. Obviously, he will get a little bit made fun of with the way that he played at Ohio State, but I think we can all agree playing at Syracuse at quarterback is a little bit different than playing at Ohio State. So I think he'll handle the pressure a little bit better. It'll be obviously much less pressure on him to make a lot of the plays, and they did a really good job bringing in some wide receivers to help him. Zed Haynes is a fantastic player that just hasn't quite you know, hit his full stride in college, but absolutely can be a big-time player for them. I think they've done a great job on the defensive side of the ball as well. Deuce Chestnut and Devin Grant are two very, very talented DBs that I think Devin Grant is one of the least talked about players in the entire country, and I think he's someone that is going to make a couple of plays that might just make Sports Center at the end of the day. So he's someone that I'm really watching. Coming out of Buffalo, had five picks a year ago, and I covered Buffalo very closely when I was doing uh, some scouting for Sports Info Solutions, and this guy is incredible. He flies downhill. He plays the game very instinctively and does have a, uh, a couple of holes in his game, right? He has a couple of things where you just wish they got refined a little bit. Now you have uh, Fran Brown to learn from and to get uh, developed from, and he's going to do plenty with this kid. I think he could be one of the best DBs in the entire ACC and could be a guy that we're looking at very, very closely going into 2025 about the 2026 NFL draft, but we'll get there in time, obviously. Um, but from where I'm standing, Fran Brown has a very clear vision of what he wants to do at Syracuse, and he is executing that step by step. He is not taking any uh, shortcuts. He is not trying to game the system in any way, but he is doing an incredible job of building something really special up there in New York, and it'll be fascinating to watch if Syracuse can maybe poke their nose into the conversation over the next couple of years. But UNC is the last team here, and I'm focused on Max Johnson. I think he might just have his best year yet as a UNC Tar Heel, and I feel like a lot of this just has to do with the environment he's in. I think he did a great job while at LSU on some spot starts that um, he was not expecting to play in, obviously. And then he went over to A&M and kind of the same story. Uh, he was fighting Connor Wegman for a little bit, but most of his starts were because of injury, were because of uh, things kind of out of his control. Now he's the guy, and he can kind of go to sleep and feel fully comfortable that he is the guy going forward around there, and he doesn't have to worry about that, and I think that's a huge thing. Obviously, there's still a couple of questions about that quarterback room. Jacoby Criswell came back from Arkansas, and there's a chance, I suppose, that Max Johnson gets beat out, but I do think with Omari and Hampton in the backfield where you're going to have this remarkable run game, there's no two ways about that, but you also open a lot of doors in the past game for Max Johnson. And I think all of us, as we've been watching him over the past couple of years, the best work he does is when he's behind a really good offensive line, working out of play action, working out of run games, that will definitely give him more open paths in the passing game. So it'll be fascinating to watch this. This is definitely the best running back that he's been next to since Devin A. Chain over at Texas A&M. And I'd take Omar and Hampton over Devin A. Chain pretty much any day of the week. So I think he's going to be someone that definitely helps him kind of make that next step into what he can be. Now, do I think he's going to light the scoreboard on fire? Probably not. But I think executing this offense will be more than enough. You have some dudes at wide receiver. I think Nate McCollum is going to be a fascinating player. He transferred over from Georgia Tech this past year and uh, is a really, really interesting player. Had a good year last year for the Tar Heels, but I feel like he might just break out and be a big-time player for them. So they've done a really good job out there. It feels like Mac Brown is doing his best to keep up with the ACC. That is just ever-changing and a really, really tough thing to keep up with, but uh, it feels like Max Johnson might be a step in the right direction, and they might not win the conference or anything crazy, but I feel like Max Johnson will do plenty in the uh, on the football field to make this team successful, but we'll take our final break here, and when we come back, we're going to talk about college football, and we're going to talk about where it's sitting right now and why I have some optimism about the future of the sport in particular. Now, can I say the same thing about college sports as a whole? Not so much, but uh, I'll talk about college football after this and uh, give you guys an idea of why I think we might just be okay at the end of all this. So stick with us and we'll be right back. <laughs> 